Something I will say for the record, I did not plan how I would view my script for this video as the camera's lens does not have a filter thread for me to attach my teleprompter, so it's gonna get weird. Today's video is going to be something a little different. You may have noticed that up until this month I've taken a brief hiatus from covering up much of streaming topics or things like that. But over the past month or so I've really been getting back into set streaming setups and streaming software and hardware and things like that and I've been pretty stoked to share some of the stuff that I've been getting into. Especially since I've been building out my own streaming setups and things like that and looking into things that not a lot of people would consider. I want to pose the idea of using PTZ cameras for your live streams instead of the usual DSLR or mirrorless hooked up to a cam link or just a standard webcam. It's a little weird, but I think for some people this might be the perfect solution. So we're going to dive into that after a word from our sponsor. The Mod Mic Wireless can boldly go where no mic has gone before. This microphone can attach to any headphones, requires no additional wires, features very low latency, a dual capsule microphone, 12 hour battery life, and LED indicators on the receiver so you know when you're muted and or when the battery is running low. And you can basically run your entire house without ever losing a signal. What more could you ask for? Learn more by clicking the link in the video description. The specific camera that we're taking a look at today is the Sabre 4K from Angikiss, who were kind enough to loan a sample out for a month or so for me to review and check out, as I've been trying to figure out if I want to use these in my setup. I've taken a look at a couple different PTZ cameras in the past on my reviews, but I wanted to look at what's available now and what might be most flexible for my use case. By the way, PTZ stands for Pan Tilt Zoom Cameras, which are cameras that have pretty much all of this built into the functionality that you can control remotely, which is turning left to right, tilting up and down, and zooming in and out all within the camera body itself that you can control with something like the remote for the camera. Running through specs real quick like, and since I can't reference my script into you, I'm gonna have to reference the specs for my phone because I don't have them memorized off the top of my hand because I'm a professional. The Sabre 4K is more or less their flagship, their top of the line model that kind of represents the technology that they can develop to put into their other cameras and features a 12 meg megapixel CMOS sensor. It has a wide angle optical lens that can zoom up to 12 times, which goes really far, I'll show you later, uh, with an additional two times digital zoom if you somehow need to zoom in really on someone's pores or across a football field, I guess. And it can do 4K video over IP in H.264 or H.265 encoding. It supports power over ethernet, so you don't need wall power for it if you have the right networking setup. It supports standard control protocols for Sony Visca, Pelco P and Pelco D. If you don't know what these are, don't worry. You don't really need to. They're just how you can further remote control the cameras. I don't even know what half of them are. Uh, you don't need to worry about it. But it can be controlled via a remote or the web UI, although that's a little iffy, we'll touch on that. It has wide dynamic range modes, it has noise reduction, sharpening support, and supports up to 3840 by 2160 at 30 FPS, which is what we're using to record right now, over IP or HDMI, and then can do uh, 1080p60 over USB, HDMI, SDI, IP, and it can output over all of them simultaneously, which is pretty insane. That's a lot of info to throw at you, so definitely dig through the product manual and the specs page and things like that as you're shopping for cameras before purchasing. There's a lot to this camera. What makes this specific camera stand out is the flexibility in its outputs that I was just describing. It's insane. This camera can send an IP video signal up to 4K over RTSP over the Ethernet, and it has two different streams of it. One would be, you know, the full res, and then you have a secondary one that's a slightly lower quality for monitoring or something. It can do up to 4K output over HDMI, and then 1080p 60fps output via SDI or even USB. Yeah, this camera can act as its own capture card without the need of additional setups, which can really help to bring in your 1080p 60fps signal for broadcasting or video calling or things like that without needing extra hardware. If the camera is up close to your computer, you can just connect it directly and not need any additional configuration or setup, which is pretty nice. And it can output 1080p 60 to all of these streams, HDMI, RTSP over ethernet, SDI, USB, it can output all of those simultaneously, which further increases the flexibility of the outputs and what you can do with it. The variety of setups you can use it in, because you can use it in multiple setups at the same time. The camera features a quarter 20 threaded tap on the bottom so you can mount it with normal camera tripod mounting stuff, that's what I'm using. And you can mount it just about anywhere, because you can mount it upside down on the ceiling in a corner, 
and you can flip and mirror the image as desired within the camera's controls. You can put it on a tripod on a corner, you can put it on a tripod here, you can set it on a table, it's got rubber feet, you can put it just about anywhere, and the 12 times zoom lets you really get the framing that you want. Uh, the 12 times zoom actually covers the entire distance of my living room office in my apartment, so I can go from pretty much all the way up against one wall to zooming in on the trim of the next to the floor of the wall across the room, which is pretty crazy. If you want to control grain or sharpness, there is both noise reduction and sharpness boosts available in the menus or right on the remote. Actually, I have dedicated buttons for it. Uh, the same thing with flipping and mirroring and switching between manual focus and autofocus, which is kind of cool. The remote also controls panning and tilting and zooming for quick adjustments, and those controls are super smooth. So for example, I'm going to reveal a little bit of the behind the scenes here. I can just sit here and wee. You get a little bit of the, if you go too fast, because it kind of has an acceleration, you get a little bit of the rolling shutter, but just for quick adjustments, it's fairly smooth, and the results that you can get can be pretty cool. And if I zoom in and out here, you get to see the whole ridiculousness of the <laughs> the mirage of the setup that I'm using completely busted here. And it, if you have it set to autofocus, it can autofocus throughout that whole range, which is pretty handy. Uh, the remote also lets you control up to four different cameras at once, which is pretty cool. So if you have a bunch mounted in different places, which is something I'd want to do, you can control which camera you're controlling and quickly do adjustments there, which is nice. However, it is infrared based, so you will need line of sight with the camera pretty much in order to really get controls going. The camera isn't perfect though. You can only output 4K to a single source at a time, either IP or HDMI, and the rest will be locked to 1080p or lower. And their IP control system is incredibly outdated. Requiring me to run Internet Explorer, disable security settings, install ActiveX controls, and the UI doesn't scale at all and ends up just looking really janky with my Windows DPI scaling enabled. It's fairly annoying, especially when my usual complaints about this stuff are that they try to go to modern, requiring only mobile apps to control things, and usually only iOS. This is the polar opposite. Also, the on-screen menu or OSD to customize settings seemingly doesn't show up, at least over HDMI at 4K, which requires me to hit the reset button and re-undo all of my settings and set it back to 1080p to actually access the menu again. Really bizarre there. I don't, I can't imagine that's intentional, but I can't get it to work. Also, the video mute button, which is just supposed to cut off the signal if you're doing a call or something and need to cut it off, seemingly just doesn't work over HDMI. I think I understand why that happens in terms of how cameras work and they output HDMI feeds like that kind of thing probably typically wouldn't work, but it's still a minor annoy annoyance to me. The RTSP stream when running over Ethernet can be accessed via your web browser or via a VLC and it can be added to OBS with a VLC video source and just inputting the stream URL, main or secondary, that the web UI gives you. The USB driver is UVC and thus is plug and play within Windows and automatically works in Discord, Skype, Windows 10 camera app, things like that. So that's really convenient that it's just kind of automatically set up there for you, which is a nice touch. While bog standard streaming setups with a single host playing video games is still probably best or at least easiest suited with a single DSLR or mirrorless camera with a cam link or a webcam or something like that, more dynamic streams would benefit from PTZ setups in my opinion. As I'm working on how I'd like to do streams in an ideal world, I could see myself utilizing a few of these kinds of cameras to get different angles of my production desk or my workbench when I'm doing PC build streams, showing different areas I'm working in of my retro room, things like that, that these cameras would make a lot more convenient. Being able to just quickly adjust with the remote the controls of the camera for pan, tilt, zoom, left, right, up, down, zoom, in and out uh, would just reduce a lot of hassle of my streaming setups and really help me get the camera feed that I want to show to my viewers. The video quality is pretty solid too. Uh, it doesn't seem to like pure, you know, bright light on black background, which is what I have here, but I have some other video samples included. It holds up pretty well, especially when you consider that people can generally just leave it on auto mode and have it look great for most of their setups. I do have it on manual mode right now to kind of compensate for my crazy lighting here, uh, but it holds up pretty well. I really like diving into unique streaming setups and use cases, and I'd love to build out a future streaming setup with a few PTZ cameras just like this. What do you think? Could you use a PTZ camera in your streaming setup or in your studio? Comment below with your thoughts. While you're down there, you can find a link to Angie Kiss's website. I really hope I'm saying that right, Angie Kiss. Uh, when, you know, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and 
Subscribe so you can catch my upcoming streaming builds that I'm doing, future streaming guides, cool tech education. I'm Vox. I'll see you in the next one.